be worn in public settings and strongly recommends physical distancing. The meeting will be available to the public for live broadcast and on-demand viewing on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, um, I'll quickly introduce everyone to, um, so I'm Clancy Black, TMAC Chair. We've got Joy McMurray, uh, TMAC Vice Chair, and um, TMAC members, Jim Hamla, uh, Mitsu Saito, uh, Laurie Urquiaga, who is our Planning Commission representative, um, and Dave Harding um, from City Council. Thanks for being here. Um, and also welcome staff and other um, attendees. So I think we'll um, dive into item number one on our agenda first, unless there's anything else we need to address, um, which is evaluation criteria for Center Street. Um, I have what we decided on available to share, but um, Crystal or um, I guess Bob's not here. Do you have it to share or should I go ahead and do that? You should be able to now. Or Robert. Um, okay. Okay, so you all should see the word doc here. Um, so this was discussed, I believe it was two months ago. Um, and through some emails, we'd all kind of felt pretty comfortable with this wording. Um, so as a little background, this is the, these are the criteria that we would use in helping um, public works and potentially city council or um, whoever needed to prioritize and rank potential center street projects. Um, you know, the, the way we use it, I think, is still to be determined a little bit, but this at least is going to give us a um, consistent measuring stick for those projects so that we can um, rate them on, on similar scales. Um, we still need to discuss the actual ranking of those projects, like do we rank it as a good, fair, poor, or a one to five? Um, that's something that we can discuss today if we'd like. But what we were hoping to do right now is to um, take a have a final vote on approving these um, unless there's more discussion that we want to have. Um, I'll go ahead and read them um, for the for the sake of the meeting. So uh, the proposed pro there's four criteria. First is the proposed project prioritizes pedestrian safety and comfort while supporting multiple modes of transportation. Two, contributes to the aesthetics of the destination and enhances the downtown experience. Three, uses interim design strategies to demonstrate potential outcomes and incorporates phased design. Four, maintains and supports convenient access to businesses and services. Um, and I'll add, these aren't numbered in order of any priority, just a, just a list. So anyway, um, do we have any additional discussion or thoughts on these? Um, or does everyone feel good about these and we can go ahead with the approval? Uh, I, th I, have. I, I think all these uh, four things are uh, very good and, and it's clear. And then we don't have a lot of criteria. That's good based on these four. But eventually, uh, if you want to compare the project, we need to place some kind of uh, weight to each of them. And uh, we already know safety uh, is very important. So I'm sure that will come to the top. And the, uh, when you compare, you know, we engineers, <laughs> some kind of numerical uh, values will help. So um, eventually, I think we need to have some kind of weight for this to make the uh, ranking uh, easier. So that's an additional thing that you might want to mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that um, we will at some point want to figure out a weighting. 
Absolutely. Um, any other thoughts or discussion on these or is uh, silence meaning that everyone's good? We all emailed and I think we're all good with these. So we probably... Yeah, I think we're good with them. I agree that we need a waiting. I don't know that we need the waiting before we accept the criteria in general. Mm -hmm. That just needs to be a priority to establish that. Right. What, one of my general thoughts is that maybe next meeting we could um, actually start applying this to some of those sample pro project ideas that we had because I think it'll be easier to decide on a waiting once we kind of see how it's shaking out. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would agree if, if we had to wait today, like I think I'd, I'd probably put number, number one and four maybe as my highest um, mm -hmm. and three maybe as the lowest, just cause that's more of a strategy than a, right. anything else. But I, I, I do feel like that's probably a separate discussion that we would need to have. Mm -hmm. um so if ever if it sounds like we're good with these so then we'll go ahead and take a vote so i will i will submit a motion that we approve these as the center street project evaluation criteria um with the understanding that in the future meeting we will determine weighting and scoring for these criteria I will second your motion. Okay, so we'll note that Lari Urquiaga seconded. Yeah, um, yeah second too. So all those in favor will maybe, um, gosh, we do this so rarely on Zoom. So I'll just say everyone's name and just give us a yay or nay so we know. <laughs> Jim? Yay. Uh, Mitsu? Yay. Lari? Yay. Uh, Dave Arnold, I guess, I think is here now. Maybe he's unable to speak. Joy? Yay. Um, and I am a yay for this also. Um, sorry, I'm looking for the chat. Okay. I don't know. If, sorry, I'm trying to- Ah, it finally worked for me. There we go. I don't know, it's like I was in a lobby or I could hear you, but it just, the interface wasn't right. Okay. The, the only thing that I saw in the criteria when it got sent out was, and I'm not sure what to do with it, but when, and I can't remember his name, but he showed us the, the scooter traffic mm -hmm. yeah, and it went, and it went all the way over to the park. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, I think the number four uh, um, kind of goes at it, but it's how do we get, you know, movement all the way down there. The scooters are clearly moving people all the way along a much broader distance than people would walk. So I'm not sure which one of these would capture that, a strategy to try to get our foot traffic all the way, because we have other businesses. So like most of the business is occurring close to university, like maybe the first three blocks. And what I saw with that scooter traffic is it's taking traffic all the way down, which might mean our business sector can actually extend further down the street maybe all the way down to the new city center and to the park. So I'm not sure that any of these strategies specifically will address that. And I never thought of that until I saw that scooter data and the potential we have to maybe activate a larger portion because with just pedestrians, we only walk so far. I, and so I'm not sure what to do with it, but I'm fine with the four things. I like Clancy's ordering. It just uh, didn't seem to quite capture maybe what we could get out of the scooter traffic. Um, so I, my, or so real quick. So for the vote itself, you're yay on this thing? Yay. Okay. Yes. So I'll say that the motion passes unanimously. Um, and then I think we're good there. To that point, Dave, I, I think I do agree that's something we should think about. And um, I, I don't know the solution yet, but yeah, I, t I totally understand and agree what you're saying. We've got to figure out how to kind of extend that reach a little bit. Yeah, but at the same time, number one, in a way, is while supporting multiple modes of transportation. So that can, that's broad, actually. And yeah, that's good. 
Definitely. I like that map too, uh, like uh, David said. I was very, very, uh, very good presentation of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Scooter things, yeah. Um, now, now that we have passed that, do we want to spend a few minutes talking about priority and waiting? We've got a smaller agenda today, so I think, it, you know, we could spend 10 minutes talking about that if we'd like. I like the priority, Clancy, that you suggested as a starting point, and then maybe we can all comment on that. Yeah. Let's see. Let me... Uh... Dave, Arnold, while Clancy's rearranging those, um, do you feel like the combination of multiple modes of transportation in number one and maintains and supports convenient access to businesses, would that reach the scooter point that you were talking about or you're looking for something additional? Yeah, what I saw, what dawned on me as soon as I saw that scooter traffic is it's clearly different than bicycles. If we provide a rental service of these, whether it's scooters or bikes, it's caused a different behavior on Center Street. So it's not just a transportation multimode thing, it's access to a transportation device. To, so a pedestrian can choose in the moment, oh, I'm going to rent this scooter and I'm gonna use it to take me, I'm still a pedestrian, but I jumped on, it's like, it's not like getting on the bus, it's like getting on something else. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's just a multimode transportation issue, I think it's access to a, to, it, it, it's kind of like there's a, a it's, it's like a, it's not a bus, but it's like a service that we're providing to move people up and down the streets. And so uh, and I didn't realize the scooters were doing it to that extent, but they are. Well, so that's, that's why, if, okay. if that makes sense. Thanks for the I, question, Joy. I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm like Quincy. I don't know what to do with the information, but it's something that we've never really realized before. And it's, it's similar to what I think I shared with bikes. Like, I often won't ride my bike downtown because I can't ride on the street and it's too hard to find a place to put my bike to get from the street to a bike parking spot. I feel like that it's a similar problem where what you're saying is we need to facilitate access to those scooters and the scooters moving about from here to there and someone setting it down and being able to find it, which is kind of similar to the bike problem, I think, if I'm understanding you right. I think we could put in or somebody could put in a bike rental program as long as the bike was safe, right? Like Joey, you described, I'd like to be able to bike down. Wouldn't it be cool if I could bike down to Kalachi's or I can't remember who you said, right? With yeah. my kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we all get that, right? Um, but uh, people take multiple modes to get to downtown. Um, they could rent a bike and go to the park. Right, so currently we don't have any bike rental. Well, a bike rental wouldn't work very good because we don't have a bike-friendly downtown. Right. If we had a bike-friendly downtown, then a bike rental might solve this as well as a scooter scooter rental. So I'm thinking, thinking, I think I'm identifying, or what I've identified is a rental program of a, a transportation rental program that pick it up and drop off is going to change, could potentially change the nature of our downtown and, and where our pedestrians go. And that's why I'm not sure that these uh, criteria capture that. Because it's not a transportation, it's access to a transportation device via rental. So I'm kind of thinking, if the, wondering if there might be um, an analogy between, say, a scooter and a conveyor belt. Um, and if there's any engineering data <laughs> about... Um, you know, internal conveyor belts in places like airports, because they, they go and they stop and they go and they stop and you get off and you walk to something, but you may get back on and go further. Um, I just don't know if there's any data about utilization of something like that, that might be applicable mm -hmm. to our scooter issue. Well, I wonder if we could ask uh, someone on staff to go explore it and bring us information back of. Yeah. That would, that would be interesting. Um, I, I, you bring that up. It's like one of our problems is parking, uh, a, a perceived problem, I will say. Mm -hmm. I don't think supply is a problem. I think it's perception um, is parking. And we have garages that are a little bit more on the periphery at Wells Fargo and Zions. If we, if we better facilitate people parking there and then renting their scooter and have a, 
convenient way to take that scooter to those businesses. It, it is kind of that conveyor belt, you know, start right. here, grab your scooter, go wherever you want. Um, I think Javin raised, Javin, did you want to share something and can you respond yeah, to the idea? maybe someone look into the, the conveyor belt question. idea? I have a question on the comment. Yeah. Um, the comment first is, I reached out to Super Pedestrian to see if they could get data just so we could see how many are actually riding along Center Street rather than it start and end points. I'm still, they're still working on some of that. So hopefully I can have that for you next time. Cool. Okay, great. Um, but my question, David, I'm wondering if you can rephrase your question so I know what I need to, um, how I can best answer that at a subsequent meeting. Uh, like, could you go study? What's well, the conveyor belt idea? I think Laurie articulated it very well. Could we use the scooters or a bicycle rental program if the streets were reconfigured to bridge people from parking garages or, you know, you, you get to downtown, it doesn't matter where you arrive, you can take these conveyor belts because it, what is it? It's a half a mile over to, from university to where the new city center building is and the park. It's a half a mile. Is it five blocks? Yeah. Five. Yeah. So I really like Laurie's thing. Can you come up with a conveyor? I, you know, a way we can have conveyor belts to move people around. And it's also part of university because we go, what, three blocks up university, something like that. And probably two blocks on the east center street, maybe at least one block going to the east, we have business. So we have like a half a mile spread east west. And then we've got about a at least a three or four block north south on university. If you could come up with a uh, a conveyor belt approach, that could really enliven our downtown business area. Because what it does is it makes the pedestrian area bigger. And I don't know mm -hmm. if that's if it's possible. If any has anyone has any other city successfully done this? I don't know. And that's what I kind of mean by research. Could you go out and find cities that su successfully have made their pedestrian areas larger by putting in some form of a conveyor belt? I, I'm not a physical conveyor belt, but I like Laurie's uh, metaphor. I think it's a really metaphor, good one. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I'll look into that and get back to you on that. Okay. Thanks. To, um, to that end on, on the ranking where this doesn't specifically address it, but like if we had a plan for for this idea, I think it would rate it would rank highly or rate highly on number one, where it it would hopefully prioritize pedestrians but support multiple modes, and would rate highly on number these aren't in order yet, but mm -hmm. rate highly in number two, convenient access to businesses and services. So um, that's what I'd see anyway. Um, so let's, yeah, let's talk about this for a few minutes. So I put this in the general order that I'd maybe proposed. Mm -hmm. Um, I would personally, I kind of have one and two right now is equal in my mind. Um, and then number three below those and number four below those, I think, but, um, let's hear some other thoughts from everybody. Well, <clears throat> Uh, to me, uh, number one is slightly more important than two because of the speeding issues and stuff and in the news and stuff. And also really for safety purpose, um, if we could improve the safety and then uh, and comfort, then people uh, desire to come, more people will de uh, desire to come to downtown, which will eventually help the business and services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so any improvement in one, in a way, providing access to. Now, whether that's aesthetics or not, that's the next question, but, uh, but you know, I thought about this uh, new building um, is now built and it's, it's a sort of landmark. You come in from I-15, get off, Center Street, bah, the entrance of this uh, downtown uh, Provo has this new building. So it gives a different feeling. So it may be a good time to in, uh, start uh, this, whatever the new stuff that will help 
drivers did notice that they have to drive in slower than before. Yeah. I, I agree. It's a, it's a better mental indicator that, hey, I'm entering a, a dense area. I need to slow down than, you know, a retail location like we used to have there. Like a I agree with historical uh, me downtown too. Mall, something like that. Yeah, I, I agree with me too. I think number one is slightly more important. I think that it does um, just by its nature encourage number two. So they are very, very close. Um, I'm good with the um, order that you have them there. And I know that we've seen this a couple places. I know it was in the priority list that um, staff came up with was signage at the entrance to the pedestrian mall. Um, One of the members of the planning commission, I can't remember her specific words, but it was something like, um, this is a a pedestrian area, vehicles are guests um, in this neighborhood or something like that. Um, And I do think signage at the entrance to the pedestrian mall um, is a good idea, Um, something that ought to be high. It's also not very expensive. So if we can come up with good language, that's probably something that can go up Mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm. I I can definitely see that if if we were if we were debating an option that improved safety or, or let's say if we were debating an, an idea that improved access to businesses, but was unsafe, I don't think I'd be okay with it. So that's, I'm saying that in support of your idea that number one really probably is a little more important than number two here. Whereas if, if there was an idea that improved access, but maybe didn't look quite as nice. Um, I think, I think I would be okay with that because I think access to business is important, even if it's not perfect aesthetically. Dave Harding, do you feel like this priority list of criteria matches the intent of the council? Ah, thank you for asking. Um, it's a lot easier to speak from my own <laughs> my, my own opinion than trying to trying to consider the, the, the opinion of the whole council. Um, I, I got very excited when I saw everything distilled down to these four points. I think you guys are spot on on this. Um, and from the discussions that we've had as a council, and particularly those who are more vocal about this, I, I think I think you've got them in the right order now. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of weighting scale you guys come up with, but I, I think the order's there. And then, you know, just looking at the relative weighting, um, it, yeah, but, but yeah, I think you guys are, are, are doing a great job. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for this work that you, and all the thought you guys are putting into it. This is great. Uh, one thought I have about number three is so the businesses, they, um, they're primarily concerned about people coming into their business. I mean, they are concerned about the whole business district and they work together. Um, but, the, the, you know, the, what the front of the store looks like, what's right there. One opportunity that we have as the city is to look, what is the art along this corridor? Like we do have some uh, wall murals at different places. Um, I mean, this is a, probably an area where we want to encourage loitering, and I'm not sure that's the right word because <laughs> loitering has a negative connotation. The positive but, version of that word. Yeah, we want the positive version of that, right? So we want benches. We want, and I think that the, I don't think that the businesses may necessarily drive that without some help, both financially and by helping the downtown area coordinate. Because we have the Provo Downtown Group, right? It's a, 
But I think if the city partnered with them in terms of art projects, in terms of street furniture, I think we just go in the city puts in something. I think it needs to be done in concert with all the business owners in the downtown, Provo downtown group. But I think the city has an opportunity to bring artists in, figure out how we're, how we're going to bring interest into the street itself. What are we going to do with the street furniture? Um, do they want to create, uh, we have an ability to put, um, on most of our street lighting, we have the ability to put banners up, right? Would they like to run some events throughout the year? Do you have the infrastructure to put signage up along the street to say downtown is, I mean, we do Christmas, but do we want to do, you know, have them be able to do, you know, come down on the, I don't know what it is, right? So I think the city, uh, we can help them do some things like that where they just kind of maybe take the sidewalks for granted right now or maybe they don't think out of that box to think oh we could actually improve the streets around us so people are coming to the downtown area and my shop or my mm -hmm. business so I, I grant i don't think it's i think it's the right priority and it's probably not as much money needed to do number three uh, but I, I think it could really help the overall experience and then maybe a three takes a little thought of what is it? I think one and two, we're going to gravitate to some what's and some how's and some remedies. Number three may need some examples or, you know, some more specifics for it to become something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I remember that before, I think the city uh, had to, you know, flower pot. I remember someone was watering those uh, flower pots. I thought that was beautiful. I'm not sure if they do it now. <laughs> yeah. That kind of thing, you know, banner also, or they like Paris here, put the advertisement of uh, cavi centers and stuff. So the pedestrian, as, as they walk, they have some fun things to see. Uh, Mitsu, in yeah. downtown with the landscaping, we do have some problems that we need to deal with. Oh, okay. uh, our, our irrigation system is very old, and we dig into the street several times a year to repair things. And so uh, as a part of all of this, in any projects that were coming through, one of the things to keep in mind might be... Uh, how uh, we can make those improvements or changes if we're, you know, changing curb lines or, or things like that to make sure we have the proper irrigation in uh, to take care of a lot of things. And a good example of that is uh, something that we're going to be facing a little bit of a crisis in the future are the trees on Center Street. They're one of people's favorite things but they're also uh, very difficult. Uh, we probably need to start a program of replacing them. We're gonna start losing some of them. They have some disease in other areas. So this is an overlay with that aesthetic portion and projects that we have coming in that we will need to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have nightmares about when Tree, we'll lose trees there. It'll be the sad. It'll be a sad day. <laughs> That's a great point. Do you do you take out a few now so you can start a younger ones growing? Anyway, that's not our business, but yeah. <laughs> and, and that we did a survey years ago, uh, maybe ten years ago now, about Center Street. And the number one thing people liked about Center Street were the trees, and the number one thing they disliked about Center Street were the trees. <laughs> <laughs> So, they're like family. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but, but that aesthetic uh, contributes to the aesthetics and the destination of downtown. It really is important. And whether it's uh, art or different creative things or just landscaping uh, that's lower maintenance. And, you know, the, 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 we've taken out a couple of the uh, planters on Center Street and made dining areas. And so th that type of thing is something that we could think about more. Um, maybe, maybe one is a scooter corral. I don't know. Yeah. 
So one question I have is, um, we have these this list of ideas that we looked at many months ago, and we're going to start applying the, these criteria to those ideas. But I don't think, and I guess it's our stewardship to kind of advise the city on what the city can do to help Center Street. But I don't think that what the city chooses to do is the only option of how to improve Center Street. I mean, clearly individual businesses and neighborhood and citizen groups, they can do things too. Um, if a scooter company wants to come in and figure out how to do a conveyor belt, great. We don't necessarily have to be the only ones thinking about that. Or if, if one of the businesses says, we want to redo our facade so it's beautiful, they don't have to have our permission. I don't think they do to no. do that, right? So we're not the only ones wrestling with these problems. I just wanted to point out that that we don't have to solve every aspect of it. We're not alone in this. Yeah, you're right. And we, we have a facade program. We have other programs. We do work with DPI. Uh, and it's good to be aware, everybody to be aware of everything else that others are working on. So we don't duplicate efforts and we try to uh, maximize any, any project or change that's made. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go ahead and throw some potential weighting we might use based on what we've discussed. Um, thanks to Dave Harding for proposing an option and checking the math for this. <laughs> this is, this is kind of what I was thinking as well. I just hadn't added it up yet. <laughs> um, Let's make sure 65, 70, or is that right? 65, 80, yeah, okay. That's 100. Whew. <laughs> so um, I'll just put this here as an idea of how we could weight these. Um, I, I like the 35 and 30. Um, those should be really close to each other, and it seems like 5% is a reasonable bump to give safety. Um, uh, honestly, I maybe wouldn't mind making this 10 and this one 25, maybe. Um, I see a head nod from Joy on that. Um, so that's that's one change I might like. Any any other thoughts? I like that, Clancy. I feel like um, the goal here, right, is to make Center Street a destination. And I feel like number three talks about that really directly. And I wouldn't mind bumping that one up a bit. And the, the use of interim strategies is a great idea, um, but it's not as core to the purpose of the center street changes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the only thing that I would say is that if something ranked zero on number one and got 100% on number two and number three, we still wouldn't do it. Right. So I don't know how you convey that. Um, but relatively, I think that works. Yeah. That's a good question, Larry. Cause like, I mean, I don't see us plugging this into a list and it's like, well, we have to do that project, I guess, you know, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, we might just need to see how things shake out once we actually do it in the rankings. Well, it can be the initial ranking. That doesn't mean we can't use subjective judgment no. after that initial ranking, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This yeah, and then the case by case. You know, this this weighting is basically if you want to evaluate multiple um, proposed project at one point, then you use this weighting, and then for each one, they discuss more, and then if it's more important uh, than you just bring up in the, the ranking list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's okay. It's kind of eventually kind of case by case. So. Um, I, I think there's a lot of value in the weighting because I think an initial ranking is a really useful starting point. And then Laurie, we just have to look at, okay, where does it not make sense? And we make those couple of changes or as people use the system. Yeah, in that big list of projects, once we rank them, it becomes easier to see what the, the high value ideas really are. Um, so um, I think I'd like to maybe finish up this item here in a minute. I don't wanna vote on the waiting. I'd rather we 
have more time to think about it and maybe try it. Um, yeah. But does that, is everyone okay with keeping these as our draft weightings for now and next meeting we can try yeah. it out? Okay. That's fine. Sounds good. So um, if we're good there, I think we'll finish up this item. And then next, next meeting, if we could ask that staff have that big list of projects in a spreadsheet um, where we could start doing some rankings next meeting um, and entering values and seeing how this works, uh, that would be appreciated. It might also be helpful to know um, what programs are already in place. Like Gary talked about a neighborhood art program. I wasn't aware of that. It would be helpful to know what efforts are already in place and is there funding for those or how, how are those going? Have they actually been used or have they not been used? It'd be nice to know what, what efforts have already been made. Yeah, thank you. We can do that. We'll, that we'll, also, uh, Clancy, mm -hmm. um, with this uh, conveyor belt idea, we're going to be look, trying to look at data uh, more specific for scooters downtown and this conveyor belt uh, metaphor. Uh, how about if we come back also seeing with on number one prioritizes pedestrian safety and comfort, if maybe we can come up with some proposed language as a starting point for discussion of expanding that concept of a, the range of pedestrian, uh, you, you know, with the conveyor belt, some, some sort of language to kick around in case you want to modify uh, number one. Sure, yeah. Hey, and adding to um, my, well, or modifying the metaphor or whatever, I know that um, there are some cities that use things like trolleys rather than conveyor belt. I mean, nobody uses conveyor belts outside, but a trolley <laughs> basically does the same thing, right? Um, where they have a little back and forth that you can just hop on and move over and then hop off. I'm, I'm having this, this nightmare right now that someone in the media is just going to hear part of our meeting and <laughs> the headline, Bravo Team Act proposes outdoor conveyor belt. That is not what yes. we're proposing. It's a metaphor. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I thanks, Laurie. Um, okay, I well, let's let's uh, close item one then for today. Thanks everybody for that discussion, um, and we'll jump to item two, which is the Southwest Area Active Transportation. Um, I think Rob Hunter had that from last meeting, but whoever from staff has, has that, feel free to go ahead. Uh, thanks, Clancy. Um, so the the title that was put on there is probably a bit um, broader of a, of a scope than than what I had intended to uh, to put to talk about today. Really, the the question was brought up, um, Dave, by you. I I think uh, maybe two or or three meetings ago um, regarding active transportation or um, getting some additional uh, neighborhood specific. Um, uh, recreational or, or, or uh, active transportation items um, as we talk about doing the regional soccer park um, and, and uh, you had mentioned the footprinter park. Um, and so as we were talking about, and, and the other thing that we had talked about actually also um, that was brought up in that same meeting was um, cross sections, uh, specific cross sections for uh, streets within um, that Southwest area, especially connecting. Um, Footprinter Park and um, and the new uh, regional soccer park. And so what I uh, wanted just to, to bring up today quickly was we had um, put together a section. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Put together a proposed section for um, 1150 South, which runs, which will connect uh, the... Um, well, I'd intended to share the cross section, but are you guys seeing, I guess what's pulling up on my screen, at least it looks like it's the, the aerial of the Southwest area. Which one, which one are you guys seeing on your screens? The cross section. The cross section, okay. Um, so this is the proposed cross section uh, for 1150 South. And it, it will go over from the, uh, like I said, the, the new regional soccer park, um, tie over into 1150 South at 1600 West. 
Um, and so that uh, corridor will connect um, not only the two parks there, Footprinters with the new regional soccer park, but there's the Southwest area plan also shows a path going along uh, Big Dry Creek when that develops. And so our thought was um, to propose a, a, a bigger uh, sidewalk, a path on the north side of 1150 South to connect um, those two paths um, so that we have uh, you can see kind of the the, the striping cross section that we're that we're looking at, but it'll have bike lanes um, in the shoulders for those who would like to go a little bit faster. You know, the active transportation of of either just recreation or or um, you know getting from one place to another from their neighborhood over to um, the the transit center or to downtown or to their to their work, but then also having a path on the north side that connects. Um, that Footprinter Park, uh, Big Dry Creek uh, path over to the Regional Soccer Park, um, just a wider walking path, or if there are um, younger kids, families, um, where, uh, you know, they feel safer up on the sidewalk, riding their bikes up on the sidewalk, then, then down, the, uh, down the street that we'd provide that path also. So just wanted to pass that by y'all and see if you had any comments or comments or concerns on that. So will we get any pushback for the area? I don't think there was. I think we had a short conversation about parking along some of these streets. I don't think there are houses facing this street. They're kind of, it goes to, it goes to developments where there's houses in there. So I just want to make sure there's no parking on this street, right? Correct. Yeah. Anything between 1600 West, I guess going from 1600 West over any over, of the over. new any of the okay. new uh, roadway will not have any parking along it. Okay. So yeah, the intent, um, Dave, there, there will be still a few home residential driveways that will be, that are existing that would remain on there because it is a collector street. It, it, we would, as development happens, we wouldn't allow um, driveway accesses on, on to 1150 okay. south so we could limit that which helps us then limit the on-street parking right uh, okay which kind of takes okay. care of that issue um, okay so if we can institute kind of this plan and that this collector um, section then yeah it, it's easy for us to to move forward with limiting parking right from the beginning yeah, we great. did the high school um, on the new lakeview parkway we did it on lakeshore drive um, when the high school was put in and the surrounding streets there through um, some of the development and also when we um, resurfaced that area, we restricted the parking out there on the streets. It's actually been quite successful. It's, it's helped with safety and it's also interesting, it's helped with speed out there. It's actually, hmm. you would think the opposite, but what we're noticing, the speeds have actually come down a bit. Um, so there's some positives with that as well. Okay. And these bike lanes are just painted. Is that the way I interpret this? Correct. So it'll be the, it'll be the double um, stripes like you see along. If any of you have been along uh, 920, um, that's one of the ones where we've done this. Yeah, I think these work great if there's no parking. So. Yep. And I guess what I'll, what, what I should have pointed out too is, is so we're going, it, it's, it's contained within the, our standard 80 foot right of way for, uh, for collector roads. And what we do is we take two, uh, two feet off of the pavement and two feet out of the planter. And that's how we make up the, the four additional feet on the sidewalk. I like the 11 foot lanes. So. That'll slow people down a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I like this too. A little narrower lanes, nice bike lane, wider sidewalk, little little buffer on the bike lane. I think it's great. Rob, just yeah. out of curiosity, is it much more expensive to uh, switch the bike lane in the planter so that the bike lane actually has a barrier between it and the cars? Um, well, so what we found, I guess, what the 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 way that we're going about this, like I said, the the ten foot um, path is intended that uh, that if people want to use that as a as a uh, kind of a protected um, bike area, 
than they can. The, the thing that we've noticed, um, and, it, and it's especially, I've noticed it, uh, I live in the Southwest area, I've noticed it on Lakeview Parkway, um, is that some commuters, uh, you know, we have that, we have that 10 foot path uh, along the, the south end of, of Lakeview Parkway. And there's some commuters who just won't use it. They still want to ride on the shoulder of the street. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so this, this cross section kind of gives uh, options, right? If uh, for, for the everyday commuter like myself, I mean, I have no problem um, riding in the bike lane. That's what I do to, uh, to and from work every day. Um, but it, but it provides that protected um, uh, path on that north side for anybody who wants to get up out of the street and up onto the sidewalk. Okay, thanks for explaining that. All right, well, that's all I had. There's no concerns. It sounds like everybody's okay with that cross section. That's moving forward with that cross section. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, thanks Rob. Appreciate it. Um, with that, um, we can maybe finish up early today, I guess, unless um, any members. That's a scary thing to say because then a, an hour long item pops up. <laughs> <laughs> um, We'll go ahead and adjourn unless there's anything, any any new or other items someone from the committee wants to bring up that we could address quickly or add to the agenda for next month. All right, that sounds good. Thanks, sir. Thanks, thanks for the input, everybody, and thanks for being here, um, everyone. Have a great week, and we'll we'll see you next month. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everyone.